This shows the left posterior two-thirds of a temporal bone. We'll take away all but the auricular cartilage to show the concha bowl and the upfolding of the concha bowl called the tragus and the tragal pointer. We will add the skull base to see some of details of the bony anatomy. As the specimen zooms in, we can see the styloid process, the occipital condyle, the carotid canal, the mastoid tip, the digastric groove, and the condylar fossa. The facial nerve exits through the stylomastoid foramen, and the tragal pointer sits in the tympanomastoid suture. It's easy to see how the tympanomastoid suture or the facial or the tragal pointer can be used as landmarks for finding the facial nerve in parotidectomy. The facial nerve descends a variable amount uh, before encountering the pes. The tympanomastoid suture ascends from the stylomastoid foramen out toward the outer bony meatus and then descends into the outer meatus. The spine of Henle is visible, as is the tympanosquamous suture line in the roof of the external auditory canal. Now we can see the middle fossa floor, the petrous ridge, and the posterior fossa. The endolymphatic sac sits in the center of the posterior fossa face of the temporal bone. The cisternal segment of the facial nerve can also be seen where it bridges from the, from the pontomedullary junction to the IAC. By taking away the bone, we can see the aerated spaces of the temporal bone. With the aerated spaces disappearing, we will begin to see the digastric groove in the floor of the mastoid, which runs from posterior to anterior toward the stylomastoid foramen from which the facial nerve exits the temporal bone. This can be seen here. The large volume of the mastoid tip can be seen lateral to the digastric groove. The separate segments of the facial nerve can also be seen, including the labyrinthine, tympanic, and vertical segments. The corda tympani nerve exits the facial nerve quite near the stylomastoid foramen. When we turn the specimen into a surgical position, we can see the facial recess, which is bounded by the corda tympani nerve laterally and the second genu of the facial nerve medially. The approximate distance between the corda tympani nerve and the second genu is 2.5 millimeters. It is generally found by using a line that runs down the body of the incus out the short process. And it is on this line that drilling uh, is begun until the corda tympani nerve is identified. When the facial recess is opened, the view is typically adjusted to sight further down the posterior wall of the external auditory canal, which has to be thinned to, in many cases, in order to see the round window niche clearly. At times, bone over the stapedius muscle needs to be drilled to adequately visualize the round window niche. the semicircular canals can clearly be seen. The relation of the endolymphatic sac to the canals is also seen. When measuring the distance from the tympanic annulus to the facial nerve, we find that the closest approximation of the annulus to the facial nerve is at the four o'clock position in the left ear and the eight o'clock position in the right ear. The lateral, the vertical segment of the facial nerve ascends from medial to lateral and breaks the plane of the tympanic membrane at approximately the six o'clock position. 
This is an important detail that should be remembered when taking down the canal wall in canal wall down mastoidectomy. Usually taking down the canal wall to the level of the chorda tympani nerve is sufficient. The specimen is now in the anatomic position. The air cells are added so we may see the aeration in the hypotympanum, in the mastoid, and in the sinus tympani. When we return to the surgical position, we can see the sinus tympani recess, which extends almost medial to the vertical segment of the facial nerve. When the tympanic membrane is removed, we can see the chorda tympani nerve as it crosses lateral to the long process of the incus and medial to the neck of the malleus. As it passes medial to the neck of the malleus, it always passes superior to the insertion of the tensor tympani tendon. This can be seen here. All of the temporal bone has been removed except for the dural envelope, the facial nerve, the ossicles, and the labyrinth itself. We can see that the stapes foot plate defines the middle third of the tympanic segment of the facial nerve. One foot plate length posterior leads to the second genu. One foot plate length anterior leads to the geniculate ganglion. In the upright position, we can see how the chorda tympani nerve parallels the inferior margin of the tympanic segment of the facial nerve. As we take away the structures of the middle ear, we see the dural envelope from which the labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve leaves the fundus of the internal auditory canal. Openings for the cochlear nerve, superior and inferior vestibular nerves can also be seen. We can see ICA and the labyrinthine artery entering the IAC with the eighth nerve.